Good morning, it is Filled to the Brim, and it is Wednesday, January 11th, and we're talking about cleansing that produces steadfastness, and we're focusing in on 1 Peter 5, 5 through 10. This is a, actually a very powerful scripture that helps us to understand how we become steadfast in the Lord. And steadfastness is a result of maturity, being mature. And we talked about humility and submission. Last time we talked about anxiety because he says, listen, cast all your anxiety. That has to do with steadfast as well. That the Lord wants us to not have an anxious spirit or an anxious thought life because that is an enemy to faith. Let's read 1 Peter 5, 5 through 10. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Remember, it's all, all your anxiety. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast to him be the power forever and ever amen you know this is a prayer over the children of god so we are talking about becoming steadfast through the cleansing stream that the lord has for us and yesterday i talked about anxiety i'm going to combine what Paul, what peter says after casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you he then goes on and says be alert and of sober mind because your enemy the devil prowls around you like a roaring lion he connects casting the anxious thoughts your anxiety on the lord to being alert and sober-minded being alert and sober-minded interesting i think it's interesting that he connects those things because there's something about what anxiety produces that is intoxicating in a very bad way. It creates an intoxication that causes us to stumble around. That causes us not to identify the devil's activity. See, uh, anxiety is a spirit of fear. There is a spirit of fear that's, that is uh, cloaked in anxiety. And what happens is anxiety erodes our faith and we become intoxicated with fear. So we do not look at things. We, our spiritual eyes can become blind. Our ears can become deaf unless we're casting that anxiety on the Lord. See, the, Peter says, listen, cast your anxiety on the, the Lord and then he says, be alert and sober. See, he wants us to say, he was telling us, listen, when you cast that intoxicating anxiety on the Lord, it will cause you now to sober up, to have a right mind, have a mind centered in faith on the Lord so that you can identify what the enemy is trying to do. See, He's saying not only does anxiety blind you from what the Lord sees and causes you to be deaf to the Lord's voice, but it also causes you to not see correctly what the enemy is trying to do. That's what happens when people are intoxicated. They don't see anything correctly. They don't see the good or the bad correctly. And he's saying, listen, you are to be alert and sober-minded and this spirit of anxiety is trying to uh, cause you to be intoxicated with fear so in order for you to be sober-minded you got to get rid of that anxiety you are saying, but you know pastor Lynn uh, I feel anxiety feeling it is not the same as surrendering to it 
You know what? You do not have to make the feelings your master. Feelings are not your master. They're indicators of things, things that may have happened, things like we talked about that yesterday, side swiped. What we do with it is what God is speaking to us about. You know, anxiety is not the only thing that can cause us to be intoxicated and therefore not be sober and alert. Sin can. Any sort of sin can. Any type of fear can. The fact is this. He is saying, do not be intoxicated with things that are taking you away from seeing through the eyes of the Lord. And also alert to the enemy's tactics. Alert to the enemy's deceptions. See, according to the scripture, we have been given Holy Spirit power to resist the enemy through standing firm in the faith. We have been given power to resist the enemy through standing firm in the faith. But in order to do that, we have to be alert and of a sober mind. That's foundational to the steadfastness. We can stand firm by faith. But what is the enemy of our faith? Fear. Fear is the enemy of faith. Fear makes us unstable and filled with unbelief and doubt. When we choose fear, we go down the path of unbelief and doubt. See, our faith is the anchor for our soul. Our faith is the anchor for our soul. Our faith in Jesus is the anchor for our soul. Hebrews 6.19 says this. This is Paul. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul. It's interesting because he speaks of anchor. What is an anchor? It's what keeps the boat in place. It's what is, keeps the boat in place during a storm. It's what keeps the boat at their home. It's what causes it not to float into waters that is not good for them. That's what an anchor does. It creates stability. And Paul is saying the hope that we have in Christ, the faith that we have in Christ is an anchor for our soul. Our soul being our emotional center. And our emotional center is connected to how we respond to things through our senses. Our emotional center is connected to how we respond to our thoughts. And Paul says, listen... It is an anchor. Our faith and our hope in Christ is an anchor for our soul. Therefore, when we are experiencing fears, we are experiencing anxieties, we can cast them on the Lord. We trust in the Lord. We say these things are not going to control us because who is the anchor for my soul? Jesus is the anchor for my soul. And in that, therefore, I can resist the devil. I can resist the devil. He who prowls around, I can identify because I am sober minded, because I am alert, because I am clear headed, because my mind is not filled with anxiety, but rather it is stayed on Christ. I can identify what the devil is trying to do and therefore resist him and stand firm because Christ is with me and in me and he is the one that's controlling me. The, the spirit of the Lord is controlling me. See, this is what creates steadfastness. We can resist the enemy and be steadfast in the Lord. But we've got to have that cleansing stream. You know what? Let's not make excuses. Now, I know that we experience things. I know that. Scripture tells us that. We experience things that can blow upon anxiety and fear. But the answer is not letting it master you. It's not letting you control you. It doesn't let you... Do cause you to be directed by it but rather the answer scripture tells us is to cast it upon him that we have been given the peace of God we are able to be alert and sober minded this is how we become steadfast he is the anchor for our souls 
we can be through the Holy Spirit. I know some of us are more emotional than others by nature, but this isn't just an emotional thing. This is a mind thing. This is a thought thing. It's not just emotions. It's mindsets. It's thoughts. There's some people who aren't that emotional that have very fearful thoughts, that have thoughts of extreme doubt and fear because they're cultivated in their mind, but they're not necessarily emotional. So it's not simply about emotions. It's being sober-minded because your mind is stayed on the Lord, that your mind is filled with His peace. As Romans 12 says, that the mind of the Spirit is filled with life and peace. The Lord wants you to be steadfast, not tossed to and fro, not up and down, not the pendulum swing back and forth. The world does, the enemy does. He wants to get you off balance and fearful and running. But according to the scripture, you can resist him and you can stand firm in the faith because you've tossed your anxiety on him and you have received that alertness and sober-mindedness that He has given to you. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. That's your inheritance. God bless you. Pray about this word.